Yes, sir. He's been through a lot. He's been through a lot. He's been through, he's been through hell. He's been through death. But I thank God that he got through and Jesus took him. Amen. Amen. We're going to um, go to John 8. And I'm going to read in verse 1. As y'all you, turn, I thank the Lord for saving me and everything he's done for me. Amen. And I thank y'all for um, being kind to me. And I don't deserve it. And the Lord, and the Lord's been so good to me. Moving on to verse 1. I'm sorry, verse 12. Then Jesus spake again unto them, saying, I am the, I, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou bearest record of thyself, thy record is not true. Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true. For I know whence I came and whither I go, but ye cannot tell me whence I come and whether I go. Ye judge after the flesh, and I judge no man, and yet if I judge, my judgment is true. For I am not alone, but I am the Father that sent me. It is also written in, in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am the one that bear witness of myself, and the Father that sent me bear witness of me. Then Jesus said unto him, Where is thy father? Jesus answered, Ye neither know me nor my father. If ye had known me, ye shall know my father also. These words spake Jesus in the treasury as he taught in the temple, and no man laid hands on him, for his hour had not yet come. Verse 12, um, the first start of it says, Then Jesus spake unto them. We already know two things from context clues if you didn't read the verse before. Them is referring to the Pharisees because it states in verse 13, the Pharisees therefore said to him. And the big point here is again. He's already spoken before because the text says again. The Pharisees knew who Jesus was and he proclaimed himself to be the Son of God and knew what he stood for. But the key word I said here was proclaim. I never said believe. I said proclaim. They heard the gospel, but they did not believe it. It is a sad truth sure. today that people that reject the Son of God. Because of the Pharisees' unbelief, they deny the kingdom of God. Moving on in verse 12, um, it says, I am the light of the world. John here uses a metaphor for the word light. MacArthur states the phrase light highlights of Jesus' role as the Messiah and Son of God. And Messiah in Hebrew means anointed. If you, if you flip to Samuel, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 13, if, if you want to, the Bible says, Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of the brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. David was the king of Israel, and Samuel anointed him king. There's a connection between David and the Lord. But what's funny is David has nothing compared to the king of kings. David was anointed the king of Israel. Jesus has been, not was, the king of the universe. David has killed his ten thousands, but Jesus loved everyone. David ran away from Saul, but Jesus was willing to go to the cross. Yes. Amen. David was a man, but Jesus was a hundred percent man and a hundred percent God. Amen. Yeah. David made many mistakes. Jesus was sinless. David died and never came back to earth. But Jesus died and resurrected for you and me. Yeah. Amen. Today, in this hour, I feel the Lord wants us to ask for forgiveness. We will not be like him because he wants us to. We will not be him because he wants us to be like him. We always have a chance to ask for forgiveness, but it's up for you and me to decide. Later in the Later in the verse, it says, He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but have a light of life. Follow or follow your MacArthur stage reveals an idea that someone who gives himself completely to the person to follow. No half-hearted followers exist in oh, Jesus' yeah. mind. Amen to that. Yeah. He, follow, he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, 
but shall have a lot of fun. Yeah. If you have been saved, you've completely given yourself away, and you're going to heaven. Yeah. Moving on to verse 13. The Pharisees therefore said to him, Thou bearest record thyself, thy record is not true. Again, it is the Pharisees' unbelief. They do not believe that Jesus is the Christ or the Son of God. The Messiah, they don't believe any of that. MacArthur states the Jews bodily brought up Jesus' own words from John 5, 531. That states, if I, if I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. The Pharisees take this out of context because Jesus did many miracles after his birth. He did. MacArthur states, however, Jesus' words are there and reconciled by the fact the Old Testament law required not one but multiple witnesses to yep. establish the truth of the matter. The matter being Jesus' claim in verse 12. Jesus could say he was a lot of the world, could say these things because he had multiple eyewitnesses, the disciples, others who followed him, people who did Jesus heal, etc. John 1 7 states, the same came for witness to bear witness of a life that all men through him might believe. This is going back to God and Jesus being the same person. Mm -hmm. He was not going against the law further forward to the fact that he was the light, but to bear witness of the light. Yep. Our human minds cannot comprehend the sovereignty of God, him a trinity, but does not have to make any sense. It just works. Yeah. He just said he was the light and he was not the light, referring to the idea of God and Jesus being the same person. Verse 14 says, Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true, for I know whence I came and whither I go. But ye cannot tell whence I come and whither I go. We see here that Jesus' response was that he could bear witness of himself because his words were always true. Even referring back to uh, verse 13, um, and, but if you turn back to Deuteronomy 17:6. It states, at the mouth of two witnesses, or three witnesses, shall he, he is that is worthy of death be put to death. But at the mouth of one witness, he shall not be put to death. It was commonly thought that everyone was a liar and had to have at least one person to verify this. So the Pharisees had all this confirmation. They had all the evidence at their disposal. Hundreds or even th thousands of eyewitnesses they could go to. The idea of Jesus never sinning, they knew something was different but they were too quick to believe. Help us today to be patient and read God's word of study. If we don't understand something, help us to find out part of the scripture. And like my dad always says, through scripture with scripture. This is, this is what sometimes causes believers to have doubt and unbelief. But all you have to do is trust in God and look at his word for confirmation. It's funny to me that if we see one thing we don't understand, we get on our tizzy. But if we, well, we just need to trust in God. Of yeah. all the things God has done for us, we just can't trust Him one time. I'm telling this to myself. We have to trust in God. If we can't, how can He help us? This refers back to verse 12. Remember that God wants to all in. Help us. If we are not all in, we will fall by the wayside. Get out of, in, out of the way. We want to be like Paul who fought and kept the course. Amen. Yes. Moving on to the other part of the verse. It says, For I know whence I came and whether I go, but ye cannot tell me whence I come and whether I go. He knows where he left him in heaven and he will return later when his mission is complete. Amen. Then it says where he left him and where he will return later when his mission is complete. Then it says, Ye cannot tell whence I come and whether I go. This whole thing is explaining the knowledge of, his knowledge over the whole matter. He knows all, yeah. sees all, and does all. Yes, he He's does. omniscient, which means he knows everything. Yes. I think the Pharisees think Jesus is stupid, but in reality, they are. Yeah. It's baffling how much the Pharisees question Jesus, but he was right the whole time. They are running out of questions to ask him. And his response would be in simple terms, I'm right and you're wrong. <laughs> Jesus came to save us, but to save us, he had to do the little things to get there. Thinking they are all this and all that, the Pharisees, but so kind at the same time. God uses these little things to remind us that we are human. He's, got, he's there to help. The Pharisees just would not accept that. And they discarded Jesus and got a reward that was very unpleasant, to say the least. Yep. Amen. Moving on to um, verse 15. Ye judge after the flesh, and I judge no man. 
We see here that God judges differently than a man. Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. Back in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7, But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not at his countenance or the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeketh not what a man seeketh, for man looketh on the outward experience, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Help us not to judge based on what is outside, but what's in the heart. Amen. Younger people might base their friends as the popular kids or the ones that look good through a good sports, but at the end of the day, listen to a popular kid in a, in a group does you no good. Yep. God has set out Christian friends for you to find. Yes. You just have to accept it. God loves everyone no matter their looks, height, weight, race, whatever. He died for everyone. Yes, he did. Yes. Looks may change our preference on who a person is. Like if we look at, look at someone on the street and say they're shady, but how do you know? We need to testify to them first and be a witness. How can we be saved if there was no one to tell them the truth? Yep. Amen. A man's faith. Jesus said that the Pharisees judge according to the outside. Jesus is not judged based on what you wear or what you use curse words or what you look like. He judges the heart. Yep. Man's heart was wrong. Amen. And that's why he came. Yes. He's Amen. not to change the clothes of someone, but to save them. Yes. But Amen. if they are saved, they'll want to dress right. They don't want to speak correctly. Yes. Sure. All this fits. God has a perfect will. Amen. Moving on to um, verse 16. And yet, if I judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone, but I am the Father that sent me. We see that he is yet telling them, the Pharisees, again, that when he judges, it is true because he speaks truth. He cannot lie. His truth is very unlike the Pharisees who judge by the law. But also, Jesus said that he is not alone it with his Father. He judges with his Father in equality, harmoniously. Yes. He was constantly in his Father's presence. He has always been with his father from the foundations of the world. He was a baby to a grown man till his hour was come when he was on the cross. He said in Matthew 27, verse 46, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? MacArthur states at Christ this moment was experiencing the abandonment, that despair that resulted in the outpouring of divine wrath on him at the sin bearer. At the Garden of Gethsemane before the cross, our great high priest prays for himself. The disciples and the upcoming believers, if you read on, it does connect to verse 16 a lot. It's all about Jesus and about his love for us. Yes. He's our light in the way because he loves us. The gospel all connects and includes Jesus. It's all about him through the Bible, Old or New Testament. Moving on, I'm going to read verse 17 and 18. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am the one that bear witness of myself, and the Father that sent me bear witness of me. The union of the Son and Father guaranteed the, the truth of the Son's witness. The Father and the Son witness harmoniously together regarding the identity of the Son. God, God the Father is Jesus Christ's witness. Yeah. I'll read John 14, 6. Yeah, Jesus read it. said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father by me. MacArthur states, Jesus declared that he is the way to God because he is the truth of God. Yes. And the life of God. In this verse, the exclusiveness of Jesus as the only approach to the Father is confident. Only one way, if not many ways, exists to God. Yes. Which is Jesus Christ. Yes. There is only one way, Jesus. Yes. Amen. The Pharisees thought to get to God, he needed the law. Tell it right. The biggest teachings. Amen. He needed Abraham and Moses. Yeah. But it's not any, any of that. Jesus is the way to God. Yes. Sure. And it's that simple. Um, moving on to verse 18. And, uh, sorry. Moving on to verse 19. I'll read verse 19. Then they said to them again, Where is thy father? Jesus answered, He neither know me nor my father. He had known me, he should have known my father also. Amen. Jesus, um, it's that, sorry. Verse 18 and 19 are very connected. Verse 19, verse 19, um, sorry. After reading this, we see a connection. Jesus is telling them, if you know nothing of me, you know not of my father. If they are trying to get to God in the wrong way, they thought it was by the law, but it was by the light. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Amen. That's the only way to get to God. 
And if you go back in Proverbs, the Bible says, they, then they said unto him, where is thy father? They were focused on the paternity or the genealogy. Yes. They were focused on where he was born, his upbringing. But Jesus has been since the foundations of the world. Oh. Jesus is eternal. He has no beginning or end. Yes. Moving on to verse 20. These words spake Jesus in the treasury as he taught at the temple. And no man laid hands on him, for his hour was not yet come. After, after reading this, you can see when it says his hour was not yet come, his hour is referring to the cross. Yes, he sir. Take him to the cross because God has a perfect will, yep. as I've said before. They had him go to the cross later, so it wasn't, it wasn't his time to go to the cross. God has a perfect will for every single time in your life when you don't even expect it. Amen. We're going to flip to John 12, verse 24. Yes. This proves that Jesus is not just a man, but he is a Tell it, Ray. John 5, 19 explains that Jesus does what, he, what his father does. But how does that make sense? It doesn't have to. We just have to believe it. Amen. Truth. God has appointed <laughs> his son by his own likeness yes. to be the way or the light for you and me. Um, verse 45 um, says, he, And he that seeth me seeth him that sent me. Jesus said to believe him is to see God. Here, here we see we see that see is referring to faith. Yeah. We have believed on him. We have seen him, and we have realized who he truly is. Amen. And if we have seen Jesus, we have seen God. Yes, sir. We do not need to figure out who God is because he's revealed himself when we receive Christ. There you go. Amen. Verse 46 says, I come into a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. To believe in Jesus is to escape the darkness. Jesus came into the world as the light of the world. I used to be in a bad place, a bad state, until yeah. I saw a light and he pulled me out. Yes. And the light, the Son of God from the side, he shows us that God really is for us. Sure. He shows that we are in the darkness, that we might um, run to him for cleansing and forgiveness. Those who trust in Jesus, believe in God, see God, and escape the darkness to be, to be in the light. Amen. Thank you for the opportunity today. Amen, Ray. Amen.